so cute. Look at this face. <laughs> the newest animated film to take the world or ocean by storm is Netflix's The Sea Beast. And we are so ready to talk about all the references and hidden Easter eggs that you may have missed. Number one. When you first saw Jacob, did that outfit remind you of anybody? It looks almost exactly like Prince Eric's from The Little Mermaid. Sure, they're both sailors, but they're way more alike than just that. It's, uh, it's, it's really something. Both of these maritime men meet a creature who lives in the ocean who totally changes their lives. No more monster hunting! <laughs> Not to mention, these ladies are both redheads. Number two. The comparisons between Jacob and a famous Disney leading lady's love interest don't end there. Jacob looks a lot like John Smith from Pocahontas. That's so. And John Smith is another adventure loving guy who changes his whole outlook after meeting a strong willed woman who's very in touch with nature. At least in the movies, people can change. I thought you didn't like strangers. Number three, Jacob isn't the only character whose appearance is a Pocahontas reference. Did the king look familiar to you? We think he looks almost identical to another corrupt, nature-hating government official. Yep, we're talking about Pocahontas's Governor John Ratcliffe. This is their land. This is my land. I make the laws here. If we ever see a guy who looks like that, we're running the other way. Number four. When you see a little girl asking to keep a feral, monster-like blue creature as a pet, it's hard not to think of Lilo and Stitch. Maisie and Blue's lovable relationship reminds us so much of Lilo and her pal Stitch. We have better dogs, dear. Not better than him, but I've always wanted a pet. That's not a pet. From how they communicate to how she defends him right down to his rather unnatural hue. Number five. Red's appearance has some similarities to another favorite animated feature creature as well. Something about that adorable face reminds us a lot of Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. And come to think of it, they play very similar roles in the worlds of their movies. Hiccup wants to be a dragon slayer until he meets Toothless. And Jacob and Maisie both want to defeat sea beasts until they get to know Red. Number six, the movie's main characters aren't the only ones giving us Disney deja vu. One scene shows a defeated sea beast that looks just like that famous anglerfish from Finding Nemo. Ah! Plus, they both remind us that Maisie's right. Some of the deep sea's mysteries are better off left undiscovered. Number seven, that anglerfish isn't the only familiar Finding Nemo fish to appear in the newest animated aquatic adventure movie. When Jacob and Maisie are underwater, there's a beautiful scene showing all the jellyfish surrounding them that bears a strong resemblance to the jellyfish scene we all remember from Finding Nemo. Number eight. Shortly after that jellyfish scene, there's a very eerie callback to The Lion King. When Jacob and Maisie see all those sea beast skeletons on the ocean floor, did you get a bad feeling in your stomach that you got as a kid? There's only one way to know. Come on. That's probably because this sea creature carnage looks a lot like the infamous elephant graveyard in The Lion King. Whoa. Number nine. Moana is one of the most popular animated films about protecting nature. And when Jacob and Maisie are out at sea, it's hard not to think of Maui and Moana. The two duos look very similar when they're in the boat together. And the nature of their big brother, little sister dynamic is pretty spot on. Little girl, I am a hero. Number 10. At the start of the movie, Maisie is a precocious and adventurous young girl who's looking to break out of her orphanage. When we see a glimpse of where Maisie is living, it reminds us of a boarding school we've seen before. From there, the comparisons between Maisie and Madeline just keep going. If friendship could transcend animation style, these powerful ladies would absolutely be partners in crime. Fair troubles, me swabs. Number 11. The movie's first scene shows a young Jacob stranded in the water on a broken piece of wood as his ship sinks, which looks a lot like Jack and the Titanic hanging on to the famous door. 
Thank God Rose wasn't there to take up space on the door. Or poor Jacob never would have grown up to save the sea beasts. Are we right? Number 12. Ahoy! Do we spot a Pirates of the Caribbean reference in the distance? Of course we do. You are without doubt the worst pirate I've ever heard of. But you have heard of me. When it comes to the tales of seafarers defeating monsters, the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise was a trailblazer. When Maisie and Jacob reach the deserted island, they have a run-in with a brand new sea beast. And this sea beast's super scary mouth situation looks almost exactly like the Kraken vs. Jack Sparrow. Number 13. Star Wars fans almost certainly thought of the giant space slugs when they saw the sea beast emerging from the sea and almost swallowing Jacob whole. Luckily, no protagonists were harmed by space slugs or sea beasts in either of these scenes. Number 14. If this scene didn't make you think of Star Wars, you probably thought of the 2018 movie, The Meg. The Meg was also about sea beasts, aka sharks, and not only did they have a scene that was almost identical to this, it was also included in much of the film's advertising. Number 15. Speaking of shark cinema, it's basically a rite of passage for a movie called The Sea Beast to reference the most famous Sea Beast movie of all time, Jaws. The way Red attacks the ship is reminiscent of that famous underwater enemy. Number 16. When the hunters tied up Red, it was hard not to think of the scene in Free Willy when another beloved sea monster was captured. Luckily, both of these big underwater teddy bears got their happy endings. Number 17. You've heard of hidden Mickeys in Disney movies. Well, this movie has hidden sea monsters. There are sea monsters to be spotted all over this movie. You can see them in carvings on the captain's door and, of course, in the tattoo on his chest. Number 18. Speaking of Captain Crow, did his voice sound familiar to you? Which then, may I ask, is the greatest? That's Jared Harris voicing the captain. And he just so happened to play another flawed ship captain in The Terror. We will have to retreat. 30 years I've waited. That is not just ice ahead. But saving Jim Nicklebones is the right thing to do. A captain coincidence? We think not. Number 19. Early on in the movie, we get a glimpse of Captain Crow's bookcase, and it features some real-life titles, each of which has a specific tie to the story that's unfolding. Crow has The Tempest, Paradise Lost, and Leviathan. The Tempest is Shakespeare's play about a shipwreck, so it's totally appropriate to keep a copy on your ship, if you're not too superstitious, of course. Paradise Lost is an epic poem that tells the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and how they lost paradise. Eating an apple doesn't seem as bad as killing a nice sea monster, but they got in way bigger trouble for it. It's also worth noting that the captain calls the sea beasts devils. I hate that devil with every fiber in my being. So his appreciation of paradise lost could have something to do with that too. As for Leviathan, we don't have to think too deep about why Captain Crow has that on his shelf. That story's all about defeating a sea monster, and the captain lives for that kind of stuff. Number 20. If you pay close attention, you'll notice that there is a lot of red and blue imagery throughout the film. From the blood moon against the blue sky to the ship's red sails amidst the clear waters, this movie is all about a red and blue palette. You name that one red, you name this one blue. So it's very fitting that the two main monsters are red and blue and are named accordingly. Did you catch all those Easter eggs? Were there any that you spotted that we missed? We're dying to know. Tell us all about them in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe to The Things Animated to hear all the details about your animated favorites.